and welcome to Fenextra TV's 2021 prediction series. I'm Hannah Wallace and calling in now to give us his outlook for digital cryptocurrency in the year ahead is David Mercer, CEO of Elmax Group, a global high growth financial technology company and leading operator in institutional foreign exchange and cryptocurrency exchange. So welcome, David. Thank you very much for calling in. Hi, Hannah. Thanks for having me today. Well, it's good to have you on. Now, your background in this space makes you the ideal candidate to shed some light on the recent surge in Bitcoin, which is really where I want to start the interview today. How closely can Bitcoin surge over the last few months be attributed to investors seeking an inflationary hedge in the face of unprecedented government spending and the printing of money by central banks? So by no means a small question, but let's start there today. I mean, it's interesting. That's a, that's a good backstory. So you'd like to think all of the surge is driven by the world reacting to this never ending economic stimulus, never ending printing of money. And I think it's got something to do with it. But let's be honest at the moment, not all or not many institutions are actually holders of cryptocurrency or crypto assets. There's some big names entering the space and they're entering the space for exactly the reason you mentioned, mm -hmm. right? There is, the good news about um, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies is a decentralized, limited supply. That's key, because if you ask any economist right now, they'll tell you an obscene amount of dollars have been printed in the last decade. I think it's up to 25%, let alone the last year. Given the pandemic, that's going to happen more and more. What does it really mean? It means the value of what's in your pocket or in your bank account is going down in real terms. So there's no doubt that every treasury function in the world, LMAX included, all the banks, all the proprietary trading funds are now thinking, hold on, should we put some of our own assets into this digital space, into this cryptocurrency space? So I think that's happening. If you read some of the research um, posts at the moment, most people are attributing maybe between three and 5% of their portfolio into digital. Some are still out completely, zero. And of course, the guys that get the headlines are, you know, there's a fund in the States last year that said they put 100% of their treasury into Bitcoin. You know, we wouldn't necessarily recommend that. I think that the bull run was very much still retail led. You see a lot of the payments providers talking about adopting or accepting cryptocurrency, adopting or accepting Bitcoin. Um, so that's really the the bulk of the growth. But I think when you start hearing these big names, I mean, some significant funds, the largest um, asset manager in the world announced last week, they're going to start trading the futures. You know that some bulge bracket banks, bulge bracket banks, easy for me to say, um, are looking at it. So that certainly makes a difference. And LMAX Digital, we're institutional only. So the fact that we hit our all-time highs, the fact that we trade have traded 4 billion of the crypto, crypto assets on any given day, we're averaging 2 billion a day just in January means that the institutions must be trading it because we service a few hundred customers rather than the tens of millions the retail exchanges that are going to list um, talk about. So that means this institutional wave is coming. I happen to think it will extend. Certainly the limited supply is key the inflationary environment that we live in is key. And I think that what you've seen over the last year and probably the last decade is the resilience, certainly of Bitcoin uh, and most cryptocurrency assets. So we expect it to extend. I wouldn't attribute in a short answer all of the growth purely to that demand. It's still a primarily retail private investor market. But in my view and the view of Amex Digital, the institutional flood is coming. That's really interesting. Thanks for setting the scene for us because it's by no means a small topic, is it? And as you say, the present bull run seems to be demonstrating Bitcoin's increased maturity, I think it's safe to say, uh, though it remains relatively nascent in, as an asset class. So with that in mind, how do you see this progressing in 2021 and perhaps beyond? Look, our, our view at LMAX Group and LMAX Digital is that 
cryptocurrencies, crypto assets, the digitization of capital markets is here to stay. And, you know, we launched LMX Digital three years ago, actually in the crypto winter, right at the end of the last bull run into the crypto winter. But it's about long-term opportunity rather than short-term opportunism. So we think it's here to stay at the most risk-averse end. I think um, distributed ledger technology will transform the world we live in in many ways. It will certainly transform payments, settlement, back offices within capital markets. So that's good. And then uh, the asset you transfer on that DLT probably at the moment is Bitcoin. So I think what we saw in 2020 particularly was the resilience of the core asset. The core asset at the moment is Bitcoin. You can make a very good case for Ethereum. It's just the one that's been most widely adopted right now and accepted is Bitcoin. But you could argue that Ethereum has many more uses and certainly the ERC-20 token has many more uses. But what you saw was the resilience. I mean, in March 2020, you saw a market dislocation of which we've seen very few in my career in capital markets. You saw well-established assets like oil trading below zero. And that's the reality. They paid you to buy it. Um, you saw these incredible blips down in the stock markets. And to be honest, the chart on Bitcoin on, on those days in mid-March looked like it was going to zero. It didn't go to zero. It took a, a, ha a hefty slap in the face, but rebounded. And it didn't go beyond zero, which oil did. So that's amazing resilience. Given it's quite a small asset class at the moment, it is nascent, as you say. So I think that gave people more confidence. You know, for this to become a real asset class, there has to be some store of value. You know, in boring terms, every company in the world has a treasury department, has to manage their own assets. Um, every individual has to do the same. Primarily, if you're here in the UK, you know, you're sitting on pounds in your bank account or dollars in your bank account in the US, for example. Now you're thinking, okay, is it okay to hold some Bitcoin or Ethereum? Um, the same way, should I have part of my portfolio in gold? So I think these, these booms and sometimes, um, or the pump and dumps that you see are important for any asset class to gain credibility. You saw that everyone talks now about Bitcoin trading up in the 30,000 to 40,000 range, but actually you look at the dip down to 4,000 in March, Remember, the year-end close in 2019 was only around 7,000. So compared to, say, oil, that dip wasn't so great. Um, and then you look at the bounce back. It quickly bounced back to above 9,000. Of course, everyone now talks about the froth at the moment in the 30 to 40,000 range. But what you're seeing there is credibility, resilience, and I think somewhat a maturity of the asset class. And we think that's set to continue. It's not just about the price. It's about can you rely on it? Can you use it? Is it something for uh, future wealth management and potentially wealth creation? Mm -hmm. It's a fascinating field. And I like how you've weaved in the history of cryptocurrencies there as well, David. So what role do you expect the increases, increases in value of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and, and Ethereum to play in ongoing discussions and development around central bank digital currencies for the future then? What about that? Central bank digital currencies, cryptocurrencies, very loosely linked, <laughs> right? The blockchain is the loose link. Let's, let's go back to the 2008 white paper. Trustless, decentralized. So then you go to CDBCs, um, was it CBDC? Anyway, central bank digital currencies. Well, the key's in the first word, right? It cannot be a cryptocurrency, a crypto asset, if it's centralized. But go back to, to, to what we looked at originally. If you look at the blockchain and the use of that in the world and in capital markets, it will decrease friction in capital markets. It will decrease friction in global trade. So if you look right now in, in terms of payments, then a digital currency eases or smooths that friction. If you imagine even 
The big argument in the US around the pandemic was stimulus checks. Imagine dropping that instantly um, to the wider populace. That should be made easier with a central bank digital currency, but it's not a cryptocurrency. You know, limited supply. If you as soon as you put a, a central bank in the middle of it or a government in the middle of it, they're not going to limit the supply. But I truly believe there will be a digital pound, digital dollar, digital yen, digital Swiss franc in years to come. And it's how we will transact. It might be the pandemic has, uh, has, has been the death knell to physical money, cash money. Um, in many ways, we all think of it as digital anyway, but actually the plumbing isn't digital. And it takes too long to settle. It takes too long uh, to pay anyone. It takes too long for anything to be cleared in your bank account. So I think central bank digital currencies have a, have a place, have a role. I think they'll be adopted globally. You know, it won't be Elmax Digital talking about it or journalists talking about it. It will be the Bank of England. It will be the Fed. And I, it's almost inevitable it will happen. Now, the link, back to the link. They will learn and they should learn from the best blockchains out there. They should learn from how Bitcoin has been adopted, how it's used, and the same with Ethereum, and potentially newer experiments out there, newer digital currencies, newer tokens. Um, and hopefully they'll adopt the right one and it will be relatively frictionless again and there'll be an ease of access for anyone an ease of use for everyone so i, I think they're loosely linked um, if you talk to the true evangelists they will tell you that potentially bitcoin let's just say it could be adopted as the central currency of hyper hyperinflationary country or economy so there are many countries out there where that might apply to. And I think that's what the evangelists think. And I don't think that, I don't necessarily say they're wrong. It's very possible that could be adopted rather than the dollar or your own currency. Um, but I think for the established, certainly G10 markets, you're probably looking at digital currencies, but they're not cryptocurrencies or crypto assets. Really interesting. Well, look, David, I hope we get to catch up further down the line. Uh, to check those predictions as they are quite big. But I want to end on talking a bit more about uh, LMAX. What role is LMAX Digital and also LMAX Group um, as a whole playing in capital markets and the crypto space? Let's hear about that and maybe end on a bit about what uh, the year holds for you. So let's end there. Sounds good. So look, where, where, where's LMAX Group placed within capital markets, where's LMAX Digital placed in capital markets? My view is, is a pretty simple one. Um, you know, I've been in capital markets for 30 years and, and the key is providing market access. That's it, frictionless trade. And that's actually what a lot of cryptocurrencies have done. So global market access for everyone. That's what we bring, or that's what we hope we add to the table. So we operate, LMAX Group operates five exchanges globally, primarily in foreign exchange. The fifth exchange was LMAX Digital. And yesterday we only service institutions, but there is that pyramid. Institutions can include brokerage houses who access private investors. So I think, you know, what, I, what we really want to do is create frictionless trade, open up market access, and essentially, when you look purely at cryptocurrencies and LMAX Digital's part there is add to the ecosystem, add to the infrastructure, make it credible, bring our proven institutional technology experience to this nascent market. As I say, we're three, we've been in it three years now uh, and we've taken everything we've learned from the biggest asset class in the world, foreign exchange, which trades $7 trillion a day, to this relatively small new asset class. You know, as a group, we trade $25 billion a day. So LMAX Digital is a small part of that. But all the learnings we have, all the ease of market access, we want to bring to the crypto uh, marketplace and specifically with LMAX Digital. For us as a, in the year ahead, it's probably the most exciting time I've had in, in 30 years within capital markets. 
I mean, we've been through, you know, I've seen quite a lot. So Asian debt crisis is in the mid nineties, the, the Russian ruble default, Black Monday, Black Wednesday, um, all of these good things. Of course, the, the credit crunch now, ancient history 12 years ago. So, but what you're seeing right now is truly an industrial revolution. For me, I think we're very fortunate. This is the second industrial revolution of my time working. The first one being the internet and e-commerce. The second one being blockchain technology. So, um, you know, I think 2021 and beyond is amazing. It's a very exciting time. 